My name is Captain 37, and in this presentation, I'm going to take you through this paper. This is a continuation because in a previous video, I already answered some of the questions. And if you are interested in seeing how I arrived at those answers, you can check up the YouTube channel Captain37 and I encourage you to also like the Facebook page Captain37. In this particular lesson, I am going to begin from question number 11. And this is the question right over here. Question 11. A company bought 759 pockets of cement in one shop and 456 pockets in another shop. How many pockets of cement did the company buy all together? This question is asking us to add 7, 5, 9, 2, 4, 5, 6. So in one shop, the company bought this number of pockets of cement. In another shop, it bought this. All together is about the total number of pockets of cement that this particular company bought. And so what we simply need to do is we need to add. 9 plus 6 is 15. So we'll write 5 and carry forward 1. That 1 that we carried forward plus 5 is 6. 6 plus 5 is 11. And so we're going to write 1 and carry forward 1. That 1 we have carried forward plus 7 is 8. 8 plus 4 is 12 and so all together the company had 1215 pockets of cement and so we know that the answer then is a question number 12 1.41 plus 5.97 plus 15.0 4, 8 is equal to, again, we are adding. So I'm going to write down these numbers here. 1.41. The other one is 5.97. The other one is 15.048. Now, it is very important for you to remember that the dots must always be in the same line and that's how come you see it has been written the way i've been written because the dots are always in the same line let's now calculate this dash here this dash here this eight so eight plus nothing is eight there's one there's seven there's four one plus seven one plus seven is eight eight plus four is twelve so we'll write two and carry forward one that one that has been carried forward plus four is five. Five plus nine is 14. 14 plus zero is still 14. So I'm going to write four and carry forward one. But I'm going to have to put the dot there. One plus one is two. Two plus five is seven. Seven plus five is 12. So I'm going to write 2 and carry forward 1. 1, that 1 is here that I've carried forward. 1 plus 1 is 2. So the answer to this particular question is, is it A? Is it B? Is it C? Or is it D? The answer is D. Question number 13. If 24 plus x is less than or equal to 30, the value of x is, is the value of x going to be this one, or this one, or this one, or this one? What does this mean? There's 24 plus x. We don't know what x is. 
all that we know is that when you add 24 to x it's going to be less than or equal to 30. So we need to find what x is. What do we do? What we do is that we are going to move this number and take it on this side. Because this is a positive number, when we move it and take it on the other side, it's going to become a negative number. So if we take away 24, it means that this side, we're just going to remain with plus x is less than or equal to 30 minus 24. It is positive this side, but when it moves this side, it becomes negative. Now, remember that when there is a positive number, you can just write 24. You can just write 40. You can write 60. All these numbers without the plus sign are positive numbers. When they are negative numbers, there is a minus sign. When we move 24 and move it across this particular symbol over here, it becomes a negative. That is how come it is 24. So we've remained with plus x is less than or equal to 30 minus 24. x is less than what is 30 minus 24? 30 minus 24 is 6. I have not written the plus sign here because even if I don't write the plus sign, it is still the same, like I explained here. Remember what I mentioned? That when it is written as 24 by itself, without the plus sign, it is still 24. It only matters the most when you have to include the negative sign to make it a negative number. So after removing this x, we know that it's what we're going to remain with is x is less than or equal to 6. Is this the answer? Yes, this is the answer. Is this answer here? Because we've been given options, remember. Is this one of the answers here? Let's check. Yes, it is A. The answer is A. Question number 14. What is 4 over 5 of 2 over 3? The word of means that we are going to multiply. So we have got 4 over 5 multiply by 2 over 3. And multiplication is much easier because we just go ahead and straight multiply. So 5 multiplied by 3 is 15. And 4, this 4, multiplied by this 2 is going to give us 8. This is going to be our answer because there is no number which can go into 8 and which can go into 15 without leaving any, any remainder. So the answer then is going to be 8 over 15. Do we have 8 over 15 here? Do we have 8 over 15? Is it going to be A? No. Is it going to be B? No. Is it going to be C? Yes. The answer is C. Question number 15. Machipisa sold all his goods at a discount of 10%. What was the discount on a dress which he was selling at 800 kwacha? So the dress is being sold at 800 kwacha. But this is going to be at a discount of 10%. Now remember that a percent is out of a hundred. If I say 12%, I mean 12 out of 100. If I say 60%, I mean 60 over 100. In this particular question, it is going to be 10 over 100. 10% 10 of 800. That's what we are looking for because that is going to be the discount. So we are going to cancel this and cancel that. Cancel this and cancel that. 
Um, so 1 into 10 is 10. So we've remained with 10 times 8. And the answer is 80. Do we have 80 here? Is it this one? No. Is it this one? No. Is it this one? No. Is it this one? Yes. The answer then is D. Question number 16. Musonda had 21 eggs in a box. If Y eggs are broken and 17 eggs are not, find the value of X. So Musonda has a box. And in this box, there are 21 eggs. Of these 21 eggs, 17 eggs are not broken. And why eggs are broken? How many eggs are why? That is what this question is asking us. So what we're going to do is we're going to get 21 and take away 17. 11. Why did I say 11? It's supposed to be 1 minus 7. It can't. If y minus 7 can't, what you do is you're going to get 1 from this one. And so this is going to be 11. 11 minus 7 is 4. So the eggs then that are broken are 4 eggs. The ones that are not broken are 17. When you add 17 and 4, the answer that you're going to get is 21. So we want to find here what the number is of those eggs that are broken. And we've already found that they are four. So we are going to look for four here. Is it A? Is it B? Yes, it is B. And so the answer to this question is B. Question number 17. Find the highest common factor of 12 and 18. What we are supposed to do is find the highest common factor. This means that it's the number that can go into 12 and go into 18 without leaving a remainder. So let me write 12 this side and let me write 18. What are the factors of 12? 1 times 12 is equal to 12. 2 times 6 is equal to 12. 3 times 4 is equal to 12. So the factors of 12 here are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. How about 18? For 18, it's going to be 1 times 18 gives us 18. 2 times 9 gives us 18. Is there any other number that when we multiply that number, it gives us 18? 3, can you multiply any number by 3 to give you 18? 3 times 6 is probably the closest. 3 times 6 is going to be 16. Is it 16 or 18? What is 3 by 6? 3. Okay, so uh, 6 plus 6 is 12. Uh, when you add another 6, it gives you 18. Yeah, so we can write 3 by 6 is going to give us 18. Right like that. So the multiples or the factors, not the multiples, I'm sorry. The factors of 18 are going to be 1, 2, 3, 9, 6, and 18. What we are looking for is the highest of those numbers. A number which is here and which is here, the biggest number. So there is one here and there is one here. But one is not the biggest number. The biggest number here is six. The six here and the six here. 